So there's this video on the Smithsonian channel that talks about the C5 having issues about their wing. But as some of the people in the comments have pointed out, they never actually got around to what the problem actually was. So I decided to look it up myself. And after finding some old documents about it, I quickly realized that the Smithsonian probably just didn't want to lose their LinkedIn connection with Lockheed and the Air Force. But fortunately, I'm just some nobody that they'll probably never even notice, so I'm gonna do something the Smithsonian didn't do. Be relevant. But also talk about what actually happened. In short, Lockheed was having trouble meeting their performance promises of the C5, so they decided to make structural parts thinner to meet the requirements, which led to the wings cracking. That's why. In long? Well, let's get started. In the 1960s, the Air Force was looking for a new cargo plane to replace their C-141s, and they decided to go with Lockheed to find a replacement. The basic requirement was to have the plane carry at least 200,000 pounds of cargo, up to 2,700 nautical miles, with a service life of 30,000 flying hours. Lockheed went even further to promise that their C-5 would do even more. But just like other great dramas from the same era, Lockheed fell for the classic trap of overpromising, and would also suffer from supply chain issues caused by the Vietnam War. By the time they realized the plane will fall short of their guaranteed performance, the company was already short on time. So they went on a rampage to subtract weight. They made the floors thinner, used lighter fastener systems, and started using more exotic materials like titanium, fiberglass, and even beryllium, but stopping short of adding helium balloons. Eventually, Lockheed got desperate enough to beg the Air Force to soften up some of their requirements, in which they politely said no, and threatened to cancel the project if Lockheed did not comply. Brilliant, that will show them. Well, somewhere along the way, they got desperate enough to tamper with the wing design to save 10,000 pounds. To do that, they used lighter gauge aluminum than originally specified for the wing boxes, which are, by the way, the main structural elements that prevent the wing from folding like a birthday card. Lockheed did have second thoughts about this decision, and was urging their teams to make sure that the wing was still strong enough. Fortunately, they still had another year or so to do sufficient testing and studying before the scheduled first flight. These tests would include the fatigue test and static load test, which involves pushing and pulling parts of the test plane at and beyond their design limits, to determine whether their production models can actually survive the stresses that Lockheed had designed them to endure. Unfortunately for Lockheed, their schedule was just too packed, and they didn't start doing their fatigue and static load tests until much later. That much later, by the way, turned out to be July of 1969, a full year after the plane's first flight. That's when the C-5 was finally put through the static load test. You know, the one that pulls the wing up to 150% of the design limit load, aka the test that goes... Sadly, it did not reach 154, or even 150. No, the wing broke at 124. What a shame. Apparently, this was due to a design error in the wing. The same type of wing that was already flying around doing test flights. So, in a five-headed move, they patched up the planes, called it good, and began delivering them like they could. But sadly, that wasn't the end of it. Shortly after that, the wings on the original test plane began cracking and the news only got worse after they began the fatigue test on another plane. As the team flexed the wings up and down to generate stresses, they found that cracks were appearing only after a couple thousand equivalent service hours instead of the intended 30,000 hours. And this was all conveniently happening right before the eyes of the Air Force, after they have started receiving their batches of C-5s. Oops. As the test progressed, some general cracking showed up in the inner and center wing sections, Ah, ship. Followed by the lower wing surfaces, please stop staring at me. And at 15,000 hours, just half of the intended goal, the test ended because, well, maybe there's just no point in beating a dead horse. But hey, it wasn't all bad. Back at the static load test stand with the design error corrected wings, they did much better this time, beating their original high score of 124 out of 150 by achieving a design load percentage of... 126. <sighs> okay, you know what? You know what? Just, just screw all this. Screw your test. Screw your wing. We're just gonna cap the load at 80%, okay? And while we're at it, we're gonna start looking at some alternatives. Don't mind about some unusual ideas we might have, because we're kind of stressed now. Just, just chill. Leave it alone. 
We'll take her from here. Bye. Actually, the Air Force went back to Lockheed to get their C-5 fixed with something called the H-Mod program. It replaces the original wing boxes with new ones made from a different grade aluminum alloy, which restored the intended performance of the plane. With the C-5 fix, they went back into production, continued working hard for the Air Force, and continued on flying to this day. There's your happy ending.